हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज कुमार स्कंद पांडे एंड आई एम एन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट डॉक्टर राम मनोहर लोहिया नेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी इन दिस मॉड्यूल आई एल बी डिस्कसिंग साइबर क्राइम्स एंड थ्रू आउट माई डिस्कशन टू मेक इट मोर इंक्लूसिव एज वेल एज इंटरेस्टिंग आई एल बी मेकिंग यूज ऑफ सर्टन केस स्टडीज Uh, that have been reported in uh, the mainstream media both in india as well as abroad with the advent of information and uh, communication technologies ict cyber crime has become the latest concern for the law enforcement agencies although the ict is meant for making life easier for the people its relative anonymity and lack of awareness amongst the common uh, people about technology and law has contributed to give an impetus to cyber crime in the digital era in fact uh, uh, everyone a common man who does not very frequently uh, use uh, the uh the the cyber space or computer or computer network and those who are very uh, tech savvy they are both uh, always likely to be a victim of cyber crime as far as uh, this discussion is concerned i believe that after learning the module uh, on cyber crime the learner shall be familiar with the new age cyber crimes the module also aims at making the learner aware of the responses of criminal justice system to cyber crimes in india and it gives an insight into the criminological issues therein the term cyber crime is not amenable to any exact definition as every cyber crime is different from the other in fact the term cyber crime is a generic term that refers to all the criminal activities committed using the internet and the computer however it primarily refers to crimes committed online that is while the offender and the victim are both connected through the world wide web www therefore cyber crimes are those crimes which are committed with the use of computer as a tool or target a computer or a computer resource many a jurist and experts on cyber crimes believe that the prefix cyber is a misnomer as it signifies that a cyber crime can only be committed online however many cyber crimes may be committed offline when the uh, computer is not connected to the world wide web in india enactment of the information technology act of 2000 the ita is a, a watershed moment making india's commitment to recognize online commercial transactions uh, also known as electronic commerce this was done to comply with and conform to the model law on electronic commerce adopted by the united nations commission on international trade law that we uh, uh, abbreviate as uh, uncitrol apart from providing the requisite legislative framework for commerce the ita made suitable amendments in pre cyber age legislations such as the indian penal code 1860 the indian evidence act 1872 uh the bankers book evidence act of 1891 and the reserve bank of india act of 1934 it is interesting to note that the ita was primarily meant to facilitate e-commerce and cyber crimes were not the primary focus of the law the ita contained few instances whereby certain activities such as hacking and digital obscenity etc were declared punishable however it did not provide for a law punishing cyber crimes in general it was only in 2009 that 
comprehensive amendments were made in the Information Technology Act of 2000 through the Information Technology Amendment Act of 2008 and uh, several cyber crimes were defined and punished with the grow growing usage of computer and internet in everyday life of people criminal activities also increased and the ITA was found lacking in many respect to effectively deal with cyber crimes between 2000 and 2009 relevant provisions of the IPC were applied in prosecution of cyber criminals interestingly the first conviction in India for the crime of stalking in cyberspace resulted in conviction under section 354 of IPC that provides for punishment for outraging modesty of a woman. Chapter 11 of the Information Technology Act of 2000 in sections 65, 66, 67, 71, 72, 73 and 74 defined certain acts as punishable. However, this chapter did not provide for a comprehensive general law on cyber crime. Now, let us talk about the enormity of the problem of cyber crime. Criminologically speaking, cyber crimes have posed newer challenges to not only the law enforcers, but also require a relook on the basic crime causation theories. The data compiled by the National Crime Records Bureau of India, NCRB, may not be reflective of the extent and enormity of cyber crime, as cyber crime is a hugely underreported offense for a variety of reasons. The major challenges that the law enforcement agencies face while dealing with cyber crimes include underreporting of cyber crimes by individuals or corporate houses, lack of awareness amongst the public and officials of law enforcement agencies, sheer enormity of some cyber crimes affecting a large number of people and the uh, borderless character of cyber crimes. This may be the reason why cyber crimes have, uh, have recorded the highest increase amongst the crime uh, data uh, for which is uh, compiled by NCRB. As per the data available uh, in the year 2014, the NCRB has reported a total of uh, 9,622 cases under the head cyber crimes that include crimes under the Information Technology Act, IPC and other special and local uh, legislations. The number is 69% higher from the previous year 2013 when the number of cyber crimes reported was 5,693. For the first time in 2014, the NCRB also collected data on special and local legislation cases related to cyber crimes. In the Indian states, Maharashtra with 1,879 cases out of 9,622 cases of cyber crimes has reported the highest number of cyber crimes accounting for 19.5 percent of total cyber crimes followed by Uttar Pradesh with 1,737 cases out of 9,622 cases um, accounted for 18.1 percent and Karnataka with 1,020 cases out of 9,622 cases accounted for 10.6 percent. Furthermore, a total of 5,752 persons were arrested under such crimes during 2014 as compared to 3,301 persons arrested during 
the previous year that is 2013 registering 74.3 percent increase over the previous year. Uttar Pradesh with 1,223 uh, arrests has reported the maximum number of persons arrested under such crimes. It is also important to note that cyber crimes being boundaryless crimes, the usual legal process and method of combating other traditional crimes is often inadequate to address the menace of cyber crime. Let's now talk about the major cyber crimes. Uh, as I have already mentioned, the uh, Information Technology Amendment Act uh, of 2008 is regarded as the cyber crimes law of India and for good reasons. This amendment act not only defined many cyber crimes which were not covered under the unamended law of 2000 but also provided for their investigation and trial and allied procedures. The Information Technology Amendment Act also lays down that its provisions are in addition to and not in derogation to any other penalty or punishment which the accused may be liable under some other law including uh, IPC. Talking about the uh, most prevalent offense of hacking, uh, this offense named hacking uh, means securing or gaining unauthorized access to a computer or a computer resource or a computer network. Hacking has become an endemic problem globally and it is believed that hackers have the technological know-how to penetrate the most secured networks and computer resources. Hackers are enormously skilled people and often consider themselves as activists penetrating into the accounts and websites maintained by the governmental agencies. Political rivalry and enmity between two countries may result in hacking of each other's websites and email accounts. Large scale financial frauds are also committed by by first hacking the account of financial institutions. Contrary to popular belief, hacking is not necessarily an online offense and by definition it can be committed against any computer or computer resource by simply accessing the same without the permission of the owner. Hacking is punished under sections 43 clause A and section 43 clause L read with section 66 of Information Technology Act. It may also be punished under section 406 that is criminal breach of trust and sections 426 and 427 that uh, is mischief as well as section 447 punishment for criminal trespass of the Indian Penal Code. A related offense to hacking is web jacking, which involves unauthorized taking over control of a website by cracking the password and then changing it to deny access to the genuine owner of the website. It also involves tampering with the source code. Under the Information Technology Act, this offense is punishable under section 66. In Sayyid Asifuddin versus state of uh, Andhra Pradesh, employees of Tata Indicom were accused of tampering with the electronic 32-bit number programmed into cell phones of Reliance Infocom to make the latter's cell phone incompatible with any other service provider. It was held by the court that such tampering amounted to tampering with the source code as made punishable under section 65 of Information and Technology Act. In a widely uh, publicized uh, uh, case of uh, uh, Mumbai, 
the mumbai police have uh, in fact arrested a hacker who goes by the name kalpesh for hacking into a financial website although the hacker could not break into the main server of the financial institution which was well secured by the financial institution the accused person could make some additions to the home page of the financial website and has added a string of text to the news module of the home page of the website the police were able to crack the case by following the trace left by the hacker on the web server of the financial institution the financial institution has maintained a separate server for financial online transactions for which utmost security has been taken by the financial institution the website was hosted on a different server which comparatively had lesser security the hacker kalpesh interestingly is only a 10th pass youngster of 23 years he has done computer courses like ccna mcsc etc but he is a computer addict he sits before the computer for almost 16 to 20 times each day he has mostly used the ready made hacking tools to hack into any website he goes in a particular website on the web which facilitates him to see the entire directory structure of the website then using the various techniques such as obtaining a password file he gets into the administrator's shoes and hacks the website the case has been registered against the hacker under section 67 of information technology act 2000 and under various sections of indian penal code now coming to the next uh, widely committed cyber crime of data theft in fact the concept of property has undergone a uh, metamorphosis in the past decades and uh, data is regarded as uh, a vital property in our daily life we furnish a lot of personal and professional data to many entities and institutions every day this data may also have enormous future value for other entities and institutions and therefore data theft has become a serious problem for entities which hold large amount of data also a lot of data can be stored in uh, flash drives cds microchips etc making it very vulnerable against theft now coming to uh, the offense of spreading uh, viruses and uh, worms computer worms and viruses are in fact computer programs that uh, can adversely affect the quality and performance of a computer computer network or a computer resource computer viruses may also be responsible for data pilferage resulting in huge loss or damage to the affected person it is very simple and easy to transfer virus and worms from one system to another system viruses and worms may also be transferred by negligence or by not taking proper care and caution in using electronic devices such as pen drives etc which may have uh, viruses and worms um, we all know that the world is still shaking from from the fear of attack of that uh, um, ransom um, ransom worm and virus which affected millions of computers across the globe now coming to the offense of uh, um, identity theft in fact uh, identity theft is a form of cyber crime where the offender pretends to be someone else in order to obtain certain benefits in monetary terms however using another's identity in cyber spaces 
uh, fraudulently or dishonestly constitutes the offense of identity theft under sections uh, 66C and 66D of the Information and Technology Act as amended in 2008. Identity theft may lead to serious repercussions um, for the victim as they may prima facie be held responsible for the offender's activity. Section 419 of the Indian Penal Code that uh, uh, punishes for the offense of cheating by personation may also be invoked in the cases of identity theft. Another widely spread and widely committed cyber crime is email spoofing. Uh, email spoofing is a kind of cyber offense similar to the offense of identity theft with only minor differences. In email spoofing, the offender changes the address and other parts of the email header to make it appear as an email having a different source of origin. Thus, a spoof email is the one which appears to originate from one source but actually originates from another. Email spoofing is often used for data theft and phishing activities. This cyber offense has been made punishable under section 66D of Information Technology Act as amended in 2008. Sections 417 that is punishment for cheating, section 419 that is cheating by personation and section 465 that is punishment for forgery of the Indian Penal Code will also apply. Another uh, very uh, uh, serious and uh, widely prevalent uh, cyber crime is uh, the phishing and wishing scams. Phishing is a fraudulent activity in cyberspace when in gullible users are sent emails from spoofed email accounts and asked to part with their vital information like bank account details, passwords, credit card numbers, etc. upon promise of financial benefits. Often the targeted victims are directed to a genuine looking website which in fact is only a fraudulent website with all the features of a genuine one and once they log in their personal financial data is stolen. In January 2013, a well-organized sophisticated computer spy operation dubbed Red October was found to be targeting high-profile diplomats, governments and nuclear and energy research companies. The Red October operation used phishing emails purporting to be from companies HR departments. The attack covered 69 countries. In October 2013, a man was arrested for his part in a phishing scam targeting UK college students. The scam sent emails inviting students to update their student loan details on a malicious site that took large amounts of money from the from from their uh, accounts and now coming to the offense of cyber stalking and cyber uh, bullying in fact uh, cyber stalking is the online counterpart of the offense of stalking that has assumed an alarming proposition in recent times the offense involves unwarranted attention and following the victim in cyber space Cyber stalking can be defined as the repeated acts of harassment or threatening behavior of the cyber criminal towards the victim by using internet services. Stalking in cyberspace 
and real space have often common features where the stalkers are motivated to uh, exert control over the victim's daily life. Often it is believed though wrongly that because cyber stalking does not involve physical uh, contact, it is benign than stalking in real space. Uh, studies have shown that cyber stalkers ultimately pose a real threat of unwarranted physical contact and uh, violence if ignored for a period of time. In India's first case of cyber stalking, uh, Manish Kathuria, the alleged accused was arrested by the New Delhi police. He was stalking an Indian lady, Ms. Ritu Kohli by illegally chatting on the website MIRC using her name. He used obscene and obnoxious language and uh, distributed her uh, residence telephone number inviting people to chat with her on the phone. As a result of which Ritu kept getting obscene calls from everywhere and people promptly talked dirty with her. In a state of shock, she called the Delhi police and reported the matter. For once, the police department did not waste time swinging into action, traced the culprit and slapped a case under section 509 of the Indian Penal Code for, for, for insulting the modesty of Ritu Kohli. In another sensational case, uh, Ms. Sharmista Mukherjee, a daughter of the uh, president Shri Pranav Mukherjee was uh, allegedly harassed by a man who posted sexually explicit uh, messages on her Facebook page. She lodged a complaint with the cyber crime unit of Delhi police. Police said that the lead messages were sent to the complainant through Facebook Messenger. The profile of the sender mentions him as a resident of Nauhati in Hooghly, West Bengal. The offense of uh, cyber pornography has also posed considerable challenges before the law enforcement agencies in India as well as in other jurisdictions. In a report published in 2015, it was found that when it comes to watching porn online, women are slowly bridging the gap in India with as much as 30 percent of women in India now regularly visiting porn websites. In 2014, the figure stood at 26 uh, percent Indian women online searching for porn. Among women consumers of porn, lesbian porn was found to be a big attraction, but women across the globe are also watching more hardcore acts online. While the women constitute an average of 24 percent of all the porn viewers, the Philippines and Brazil took the lead with 35 percent female viewers. India and Argentina come in a close second with 30 percent female porn viewers. Now, talking about the offense of breach or violation of privacy, uh, we all know that uh, electronic devices such as smartphones and digital cameras have uh, made it easy for criminals to intrude into uh, the privacy of others. Breach of privacy is any unwarranted and unwelcome interest in one's personal affairs. It may include following a person online without consent and knowledge, capturing one's pictures without consent and transmitting or publishing such pictures. Section 66 capital E of Information Technology Act as amended by the legislation of 2008 lays down the punishment for breach of privacy of any person by knowingly or intentionally capturing, publishing 
or transmitting the images of a private area of that person without his or her consent. Section 354 capital C of the Indian Penal Code as uh, added by the Criminal Law Amendment Act of 2013 uh, punishing voyeurism will also apply if the victim is a woman. Now, we know that every crime requires a proof of a guilty mind for punishment. So, let us discuss as to whether mens rea is also a constituting element in uh, cyber crimes. Interestingly, almost all the cyber crimes as they are defined in the Information Technology Act uh, with all the amendments require mens rea. This means that unless an act is accompanied by the requisite guilty mind, it shall not constitute a cyber crime. The words denoting guilty mind are expressly mentioned in all the definitions of cyber crimes. For example, dishonestly, fraudulently, intentionally, knowingly, having reason to believe, etcetera. However, mere publication of obscene material in cyberspace may be punishable without any reference to guilty mind. This may be for the reason that obscenity and pornography are offenses which cannot be committed by a person who is not morally blameworthy. Significantly, section 43 of Information Technology Act which contains very elaborate provisions against the contraventions leads to only civil liability as there is no requirement to prove guilty mind. However, the same act committed dishonestly or fraudulently will lead to penal liability as well. Punishment for cyber crimes and procedural issues are also very important uh, uh, part of our discussion on cyber crime. Uh, the punishment for cyber crimes is in the range of 2 years to life imprisonment. The cyber crimes punishable with imprisonment of less than 3 years are uh, non-cognizable and bailable whereas, the cyber offenses punishable with imprisonment of 3 years are cognizable and bailable and the offenses that are punishable with more than 3 years are cognizable and non-bailable. These punishments are in addition to the punishments under any other law which may be applied in the circumstance of the case. Therefore, a person found guilty of a cyber crime under the Information Technology Act and the IPC can be punished under both the laws. Although many of the offenses under the Information Technology Act are generally compoundable except for the offenses providing for punishment for a term exceeding 3 years, but no offense committed against a woman and a child below the age of 18 years is compoundable in any circumstance. Also, cyber crime committed by a repeat offender is not compoundable. Any cyber crime that affects the socio-economic conditions of the country is also not compoundable. Uh, provisions relating to plea bargaining provided under the Code of Criminal Procedure of 1973 apply to cyber crimes as well. The most important procedural issue in cyber crime investigation and trial is collection, preservation and presentation of evidence of cyber crime which is ordinarily in digital form or in the form of a printout of the relevant data. Evidences in the form of electronic data whether primary or secondary can be presented in the court only in the manner provided by the Indian Evidence Act of 1872 and non-compliance with the mandatory provisions of manner of presentation of digital evidence will severely affect the prosecution case. 
सेक्शन सिक्सटी फाइव कैपिटल ए सेक्शन सिक्सटी फाइव कैपिटल बी ऑफ इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट एंड द सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिसीजन ऑफ टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन रिपोर्टेड एज अनवर पी वी वर्सेज पी के बशीर सेट टू रेस्ट द इंटायर कंट्रोवर्सी रिगार्डिंग प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एविडेंस इन कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ नाउ टू सम द होल डिस्कशन साइबर क्राइम्स आर हियर टू स्टे एंड कीप ऑन पोजिंग न्यूअर चैलेंजेस टू द लॉ इन्फोर्समेंट एजेंसीज एज द साइबर क्राइम्स आर इनेबल्ड बाई टेक्नोलॉजी विच कीप्स ऑन अपग्रेडिंग एंड चेंजिंग लॉज ऑफ एंड फेल टू कीप पेस विद दीज टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसेज साइबर क्रिमिनल्स आर ऑर्डनरली टेक सेवी and use various software and techniques to hide their digital footprint making it difficult for the police to even trace them in almost every crime computer or communication devices provide crucial evidences but rules of evidence applicable to electronic records being complicated many a times electronic evidences are not admissible in the court of law due diligence avoiding use of public networks for financial transactions and uh, protecting one's passwords zealously are key to cyber security cyber criminals are everywhere and all of us are at the risk of cyber victimization at every point in time of our cyber presence thank you very much for watching this video